Hello. Good morning. We're out on a bimble, obviously. It's very, very lush. Absolutely wonderful. A little bit of light rain and overcast today, but as you see, it's like an umbrella really where we're going. So I don't think we're going to get very wet. <clears throat> so today is the last day of the month. It's the 30th of June which means it's my um, pre-op tomorrow, um, which is obviously the 1st of July. This year seems to be racing away. July already. Uh, and I feel quite calm quite relaxed. As time moves on, I am feeling more and more calm. Funny situation. It's not um, not a medically induced calm. <laughs> it's just I feel calmer about the whole situation. And I've really spent a number of hours on myself trying to work out what's going on in my head and why. All right, black and white. <laughs> yeah, just done a little bit of soul searching and things like that. And, um, oh, there's lots of things, lots of reasons why. But I suppose being a man, uh, being, quite reclusive, uh, always doing things for myself, my way, my terms. Uh, I suppose a little part of a sort of traveller mindset is that you don't want to be involved in all this stuff, popping your head up above the radar, etc, etc. Um, not being in control, that's probably a big thing. But also, um, many other things, you know, my dysthymia, for instance. How I've lived, this is my soul searching, but how I've lived my life, I suppose, is that when something comes my way, it's difficult. I tend to put a lid on it. And uh, the awkward times that you have to deal with, sometimes I put a lid on it. And uh, if there's stuff that you don't want to deal with right away, you can put a lid on it and wait until you're ready. And if the depression starts creeping in, Bode, you put a lid on it. <laughs> so before too long, you've got these layers, these lids, these layers and layers and layers. And uh, that works. Whatever works for you, works for you. And um, suddenly out of the blue, you get a whole year, the whole of 2021, where for some reason you're not well. You've got to deal with all these people. There's no putting a lid on it if you're not well. No putting a lid on it if you go to hospital. No putting a lid on your treatment. These lids start falling off, you start losing control. And it puts you in a bit of a predicament. <laughs> and uh, you have 
no choice. You start losing control. You have to trust that others are going to do the very, very best for you. And finally, when you don't think things can get any worse, you have a diagnosis of cancer, which just that one word is a frightening word. Come on, my friend. Uh, and that means that you are totally, totally not in control from that very moment on you lose a lot of stuff and a number of people are going to be involved in your life in your well-being, in your care in your treatment and uh, As if all that's not bad enough, I've got to try and traverse a little bit of a swampy quagmire here. Um, as if all that's not bad enough, you then start feeling a little bit poorly, obviously. And uh, that brings on other things like new medication. And that can upset the system for a while until your body gets used to it. It's raining quite heavy now. I knew it was going <laughs> to. Oh dear. Um, there we go. Wow. And again, you've lost control. And you give a little piece of yourself away and a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. And before you know it, you've lost who you are. You're not feeling well. You're on a lot of new medication. You're dealing with all this stuff every single day. And uh, you're not used to doing all this. And it becomes very impactful, very and it can take over your thoughts. Even in bed at night, you don't seem to get any rest, any peace from it. It's on and on and on. And it's a horrible, horrible situation. So, that then triggers off lots of things. In my case, it triggered off the fight or flight. My body didn't know what I was doing, what I was going through. My brain didn't understand it all. Uh, all these layers, all these lids that I'd put on, I decided to lift. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the anxiety came in. I'm as surprised as anybody else. Um, I'm surprised at the severity of the anxiety you know, I will talk about anxiety at some other stage and how I've sort of worked with myself to overcome what I was going through. Um, I'm still going through it, of course I am. And I'm still, still fairly concerned about lots in my life, reasonably concerned, we say. But I haven't got the dread, the fear and the panic. And it's been awful to deal with. And it doesn't matter what, what you think or what you read or what people say to you or whatever. It's something, I believe, that you have to go through. And we have to accept that. And we have to say, well, this is part of the diagnosis. Yes, you've got cancer. That doesn't mean that's the end of everything. It can mean, yes, I've got cancer, but yes, I've got pain. 
or yes I've got cancer and yes I now feel like this or yes I've got cancer I know I've gone off my food or um, yes I've got cancer and now there's a load of new meds or yes I've got cancer here comes the anxiety <laughs> you know so it is difficult and it's funny being a man you feel <clears throat> I'm probably wrong over this but you feel kind of weak by giving yourself totally to um, those in charge you know the medical people and let's hope they have the best for you and I'm sure they have I mean, that's their job that's kind of like a vocation isn't it but um there's lots I could say. I um, mean, I will talk about anxiety at another stage, as I've said. Um, lots of people have helped me in lots of different ways um, by not knowing as well, by just saying a word or a couple of words. And I know some people think, you know, that I don't listen or that I'm too opinionated or um, my mind is set enough not to be open to things. That's totally wrong, actually. It's funny in those <laughs> those hours, those one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, when you laid there and you're replaying a conversation in your head, and you think, "Yeah, that person's absolutely 100% right." You might not have thought it when they said it, but you think it now, and you know, now is never too late. So I am grateful for those people. My uh, lovely friend, Funky Flunky, one of the things that he said to me was, do whatever it takes to get through this. Do whatever it takes to get through the pre-op. Do whatever it takes to get through the operation. And do whatever it takes to get through the recovery period. And whether that's... Bird! This way, birdie, birdie, hello. <laughs> yeah, do whatever it takes, whether that's meditation, um, whether you need to take some pills to get you through it, whether you need quiet times of reading, whether you want to sleep loads, whether you want to take yourself off into the woods and talk to a camera, <laughs> do whatever. Yeah. There are no rights and wrongs in any illness or in any mental illness or in any mental illness that comes along because of a physical illness. There are no rights and wrongs. And you have to find your way through and your way is your way. It may not be the same as anybody else. And so what if people don't understand? It doesn't matter, does it? And people don't understand um, certain things. Hello, hello my beauty, come on then. Yeah, they just don't understand certain things and that's fine. And why should they, if they're not going through them? And even if they are going through them, they're not going through them in your way. They're going through them in their way. We all look at something and we see something slightly different. Look at this tree. And a person, one person would say, well, that hasn't got many leaves. Another person would say, wow, I love the colour of the leaves on that. Another person would say, isn't it straight? Another person would say, oh, there's too many trees there together. It's affecting my OCD. Another person might comment on the colour. And another person might say, well, they look strong and healthy. You know, everybody, even though it's a tree, everybody will see things differently. So if you ever get diagnosed with anything, you will see it your way. And I hope that I said to 
to one of my subs today, a lady called Teresa, bless you darling, who's going through something similar. Um, I just commented this morning and then we've come out, so I haven't heard back or whatever, obviously, because I'm out. But I said, I hope you've got a support network around you. Because no matter who you are, what you're going through, we need people. Even a recluse like me, we need people. And the more the better. And the more often the better. We really do need people. And it's so... Um, so easy to get into a state where you think, I don't know, nobody cares or I'm totally alone or I'm the only person on the planet ever to be going through this. Yeah, all weird things come into your mind. There are no rights and wrongs. Ah, this is nice though. coming out for an hour I'm pleased I've done this today as well because you know tomorrow will be I'm quite sure it'll be a fairly difficult and a fairly taxing day you know I know I've got to be in hospital for a number of hours tomorrow And I've got to have all sorts done. And I'm sure I'm not going to feel absolutely wonderful. But I will, um, you know, I will get by. But pardon me. I'll get by and I'll get by in whatever way that I see fit. And I'll try to breathe gently and... I'll try and meditate tonight and I'll try and be at peace. And I'll try and remain nice and calm and focused and you know, just see how the day goes. And I'm sure everything will be fine. Oh, the rain has stopped. came here a few weeks back and uh, I could hear a deer over in that way and he must shout all day long because he's shouting now. I wonder if you can hear him. We're not really level with him but he is over in that direction. I'll shut up in a minute and we'll see if we can hear him. Yeah, so whatever you go through in life, do it your way. Try and have people around that do care, but do it your way. There are no rights and wrongs. Um, I've been listening to, on YouTube, been listening to, I think they call them binaural beats, something like that. And there's, um, there's several. I've listened to three or four, but there's one in particular that I like, and it's, I think it's two hours and 12 minutes or two hours and two minutes long, something like that. For me, that's absolutely wonderful. For another person, they might think, oh, I can't bloody stand it. And by Nero Beats, it's just, it's like gentle, peaceful music in the background of your mind somewhere. I just sit and close my eyes and, you know, I find it, calming. I find that my breathing calms down. I find that I just feel more at peace. That deer stopped making his noise now. Um, oh, there he is. 
I'll show that then. Can you hear him? Every time I shut up, he stops. Now he stopped. Yeah, another thing I do is um, is my breathing through my little shift, you know, that little uh, metal straw thing I've got. I use that a lot. You know, some days I'm aware that my anxiety has risen above a certain level and other days it hasn't. So on those days where it's starting to spike a little bit, I use that um, shift a lot more. And that seems to really help to breathe out. It's really important to breathe out for those 10 seconds. Or, you know, you don't have to count, but, you know, breathe out for longer than we normally breathe out for. And that's a very calming effect on the system. It's funny because on the whole, we breathe in for about well, four seconds. We might hold it for a second and we breathe out two seconds. That's it. So your breath is like that. It's not, you know, it's not a calming scenario, not a calming breath at all. And when I'm breathing through this little shift, obviously you're breathing fully. So instead of four seconds, it can be six, seven, eight, ten seconds, whatever it is. And then you hold it for a second or two. That makes no odds. Then you breathe out, as I say, for these ten seconds. And just that one breath can feel nice. That one breath can feel calming. So when you repeat that, it stands to reason that it's going to be more and more calming. It's really important. Obviously, the breath is so important, isn't it? But a calming breath is even more important. And the other thing uh, that I've done just lately, and it hasn't happened yet, uh, but it's happening on Friday, is through one of the cancer charities, I've been having a chat with um, somebody from one of the cancer charities, and they suggested a telephone buddy. And I'm taking everything, really, you know, I'm taking anything that comes my way. And I said, yes, please, you know, that would be wonderful because it's not somebody who can judge you in any way. It's not a family member. It's not a friend who's known you for a number of years. It's just somebody to chat to, somebody there, non-judgmental, hopefully caring, knowledgeable, who knows. we we'll wait and see. But that's happening on Friday, Friday evening. So that's nice. And it got me thinking, what would I like to do when I'm fully recovered? And I know it may take, well, it'll take as long as it takes. If it's months, then that's absolutely fine. And if it's a year, that's absolutely fine. But what would I like to do? Is there a way of giving back in some way? And of course there is, and it is that telephone, for me, I think it's the telephone buddy system. So um, when this is all resigned to history, when I've learned whatever lessons that I can learn from all of this, I'm gonna apply to be a telephone buddy, and I hope that I'm able to help somebody, somebody who hasn't got anybody, somebody who's mega anxious, somebody who's struggling in whatever way. That's what I'd like to do. So, 
we'll um, we'll get past all of this and uh, get on the road to recovery. And then we can think about things. Right, I've got to go. Pop those on a leave. See you in a bit. Cheers. Just had to pop them on the lead, so I had to chat with that lady with her dogs. Oh, so I'm getting knackered now. So, just to end this, there are no rights and wrongs, I don't believe. I think we need to listen to our bodies quite carefully, listen to our minds as well, and see where they're going, to a degree. And if things start, as they did with me, start spiraling, spiraling out of control, then somehow you've got to try and rein them back in. And that's up to you how you do it, I suppose. But there are ways, there are means. I would say meditate, but um, that beautiful purple there. Yeah, I would say meditate, but um, for me, that's something that I've been really quite, um, well, I've been struggling to meditate. And I've tried and tried. I don't want it to become a thing that um, you know, causes an issue. So I've tried and tried and it just doesn't work for the time being um, and that's because my mind obviously has been full of things and you know the concern and the worry and everything else which triggers off booty which triggers off the anxiety but I do feel much calmer now which is nice so um, even if I can't meditate, I can sit quietly, listen to these binaural beats, or whatever they're called. Just sit and chill. Just sit and breathe. And find my way through. As indeed you will. And your way is the right way. It's got to be the right way. Okay, so, a bit of air, a bit of rain, nice though, it's always nice getting outside if you can. So I'm not sure if I will make another video or not, um, I've made a video obviously to let people know when uh, the operation is, which is 13th of July so I made that video and then um, I wasn't going to make this video but I just thought I might as well bring you along for a little bimble this is what we do to chill it's nice and um, so if I don't make another video then I'll see you on the other side of all of this when I'm much happier, much better, um, and also much relieved. I'm looking forward to the 14th. I'm looking forward to waking up and saying, right, let's get on with the rest of my life now. I don't have all of this worry impacting in my mind. And I can concentrate on getting well and moving forward. That's what I'm looking forward for too, is the 14th, the day after the surgery. So, take good care of yourselves, take good care of each other, get outside if you can get outside. And try and be glorious, I tell you. You might as well. <laughs> A little bit of pink going on in these. 
That's nice. Glorious. Okay, try and be beautiful. We'll be back another day. Hello. Be well. <laughs>